Welcome to the Business Legends Podcast, where we interview business leaders and entrepreneurs so that you can learn from their successes, become inspired, and meet the people that make change happen. I'm the host of the show, Reese Allen, along with my co-host, mm-hmm. who did not mess with me a single time, very surprised. Uh, yesterday was his birthday. He is 84 years old, and his name is Christian Webb. <laughs> <laughs> got him. Got really, him. Feeling really recombobulated. Recombobulated. Yeah. We got we to gotta, uh, get that word into this show somehow or another. Today we are joined by the better Powell. Uh, we're, we're looking at you too, Eric. Um, Miss Kristen Powell, who is the prez of ABC Carolinas, a uh, mm-hmm. networking and association that that, that she's, we're she's official. With. I'd like you to call her president, please. Uh, um, Madam president. Madam president. Thank you for joining <laughs> us today. Um, so for our listeners, and, and thank you so much for being here. Um, for our listeners, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about what ABC Carolinas is? Absolutely. So ABC Associated Builders and Contractors is a national organization. We are one of 68 chapters throughout the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, we The Carolinas chapter is a two state chapter. We cover North and South Carolina. And anybody who works in commercial construction is invited to be a member. So we have any you know, general contractors, trade partners. We have, you guys are members, yeah. um, anybody who's in law firms that do construction law, anybody that touches the commercial construction industry mm-hmm. is a welcome and invited to be a member and yeah. be a part of our board. We have other, so there are other associations in the industry that, you can be a member, but not necessarily be um, have a voice and be on the board. So we are mm-hmm. we have the merit shop philosophy, and we feel like every voice matters. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what blew my mind is seeing how large commercial construction really is on the back end. Huge. Mm-hmm. We joined and joined our first event. There's like thousands of people all around us, and we're like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Just GCs and subs galore. Yeah, you you'd never. I, it's like you'd never know unless you knew type of yeah. thing. You know. I was trying to work and recombobulate. I can't get it. <laughs> I can't get it. Couldn't yet. sneak it. I was, I was trying so hard, and I was like, "It's not the time. It's not the time yet." Um, can you uh, can you dig into? Of course, we know what it is, but can you uh, can you tell uh, our listeners a little bit about the Merit Shop program because it's Absolutely. one of the pillars of ABC. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the Merit Shop ABC was built um, because of the Merit Shop One Voice. Everybody should have an equal opportunity to bid on a job and not Mm. based on affiliations or uh, who you are uh, associated with. So we feel like we are very pro-business and we want everybody to win jobs based on merit instead of your affiliations. And so they, uh, ABC started in Baltimore in 1955, I believe, and we started the Carolinas chapter in 1998, and so we are just pushing the merit shop philosophy. Even though in the Carolinas we are very pro business, it's we still have to continue to fight to keep it that way and sure. and make sure that um, that everybody gets an equal. Uh, and a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. I yeah, love it. it. It's it's an incredible philosophy, and um, we for uh, some of our longtime listeners, of course, we had Amy, who Correct. who was the yes. who was your uh, predecessor yep. in ABC Carolinas, mm-hmm. and uh, she spoke to that and um, just how challenging it can be because different parts of the country have different philosophy. I mean, yes. in the North, you have you have highly unionized workers and things yes. like that, and and you guys still bring that even within a, a union environment, you bring the merit shop ideal to the table. Correct. It's a it's a principle that everybody kind of kind of holds dear. Right. Um, so when when did you start with ABC? I started in 2014. Okay. January 1st. Gotcha. 2014. Okay. Very um, memorable. As a mm-hmm. membership director, I was with the Carolina Panthers previously. That's how I met Eric, my yeah. husband, and our esteemed colleague. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I, I was doing a lot of corporate events and very similar things with events, working with customer service. Um, but when we got engaged in 2013, I felt like I didn't want to talk about work at the dinner table. So sure. I started looking elsewhere and found through friends and family that there was an opening for regional membership director in Charlotte and have been here ever since. Yeah, mm-hmm. I actually was offered the job in October, but felt like I needed to stay. That was right in the middle of football season, so I said, I'm, "Let me start in January." Yeah. And 
Yeah, because yeah, the Panthers were. don't make it to the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. That, I'm, I'm taking my uh, my own heart down with that one. Um, it, se- it seems like it was a very natural transition, though, because it seems it like... It really was. Yeah. If, even though the construction industry and sports, I have a sport management... Uh, I, that's my background mm-hmm. and what my degree is in. And so it sounds like sports and construction don't work together at all, but what I was doing, events, hospitality, customer service, that it was a very easy transition... I never knew that I would be so passionate about the construction industry until I got started and just fell in love with all of the people. Our members are the heart of the membership and our association. It, you guys know, they're just, they become family. They will do anything for you. And in turn, you want to do anything for them. Um, And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's something new every day. I get to, go to a golf tournament and say it's work and we put on <laughs> well, it is <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. it's hard work mm-hmm. we we our philosophy is we work hard play hard mm-hmm. which i'm sure is very similar to you guys yeah but, oh yeah um we have we have seven different council areas throughout north and south carolina and mm-hmm. so we hold at least one event in each of those council areas uh, every month and so it's busy. We're on the road a lot. Yeah. I, I said we need a helicopter. To <laughs> well, that, that's what we need, an ABC Carolina-sponsored helicopter. Yes. Um, that's a great idea. I, I, don't, I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but uh, ABC Carolinas is one of 68 chapters, you said. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. And, um, you know, you guys cover a huge surface area with North and South Carolina right. all, all being in one. Um, and then we have seven regions or sub-districts right. within that. Um, do you know if any other uh, chapters kind of have that, that type of ground coverage with, within their chapter? There are a few, not mm-hmm. that many. Uh, Indiana, Kentucky chapter, ha- there are two states, mm-hmm. but they, oh, they don't have seven council areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, New York, the Empire chapter, they are very similar. It's one state, but they have about six or seven different council areas. So there's a, a handful, but then you go to Florida, and they have five chapters just mm. in the state of Florida. Yeah. So it, it's a lot easier for things, the, for different programs, for smaller chapters that have a smaller geographic area to get things going. We have our FLEX, which is Future Leaders Exchange, and we are talking about this earlier. It, the challenge is the, having such a large geographical area we have to add seven more events mm-hmm. to get a program started, and it, it's it's a huge challenge. But we're trying to strategically make sure that it works because the future leaders exchange program is so important. We really need to get new young people excited about the construction industry. So we have a great plan in place for 2024. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see to see all the all the good things, and of course, uh, Andy Abrams has done a spectacular job. Shout out to Andy um, in heading up a lot of the a lot of the um, the mission of the Future Leaders Exchange oh, yeah. program. That topic's finally trending too. Oh yeah, like um, oh, what was that guy's name? Uh, is it Dirt Talk, Dirty Talk, um, oh. Dirty Hands? Oh, oh um, yeah. Uh, dirty jobs. Dirty jobs. That yeah. guy's taken to like main stages and talking friend. about this mm-hmm. now. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was just this. That was this year, I think, where he mm-hmm. got like he's, he's, hundreds of millions of views on it. He has the Micro Works <laughs> uh, Scholarship Fund, and yeah. where his vision aligns very similar with ABC. Yeah. Um, where he speaker just wants huh? to. <laughs> we have looked into it. He is very, very proud of. Speaking, which he should be. He's wonderful, but um, it, it it does not fit in our budget right now. Mm. It's about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Mm. Yeah. Chunky, wow. chunky, chunky. But a lot of that does go to the MicroWorks Foundation, and so it's a great program. Um, so. That could be one of the first ABC national conferences, yeah. Yeah. Yes. where everybody comes ideas. together. We're, ha- we're having ideas on Dude, that. He'd be a great one. Like yeah, he, he would, would rock the stage. Yeah. Not because he he, I don't know fantastic. if his speaking's that good, but all the people oh. would like worship that. Mm-hmm. His podcast, if y'all have not listened to his yeah. podcast, he's great. Oh, yeah. Clean speaker. I've Nothing actually like this podcast. It is one, yours is the Wait. best. Oh, no. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. N- nothing like this trash. Yeah. We know. Oh. <laughs> no, yours. <laughs> Wait. Well, you guys are number one. Kristen's oh, trying to save right. this right now. Yeah. 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 Just throw him. Just throw him out of the window here soon. Um, oh, my goodness. Um, 
I don't even remember what I was talking about, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't know either. Before you so, But I'm glad the world is trending in that direction. <laughs> it is. For and, sure. And that's a huge... Uh, we are ABC is really trying to focus on not only the younger workforce, but everybody, women. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to an IDE uh, workshop in uh, Washington, D.C. at National, and I think a lot of, I know with me, when I hear DE&I or IDE, it's, I kind of step back because I'm like, this is just a money grab. It's mm-hmm. something that people want to do to check the box, and it's kind of been monetized negatively, but the way that ABC really focuses on it is it's the exact same foundation that ABC was built on, the merit shop. Mm-hmm. We want to give, make sure that our, the construction industry is open to everybody, the top talent. And so we need to recruit, focus on recruiting women and younger people um, and everybody out there. So we have to go into the schools and tell the students how important it is and what a great career you can have in the construction industry. Just like you guys said earlier, it's so large and wide. It's for the longest time, even me, before I got into construction, I thought, oh, you know, when you think construction, you think people on the side of the road working 12-hour days mm-hmm. in the Chilling heat, ditches you know, and, and, yeah. and that's a part of it, but it's also, you can be a project manager, you can be a superintendent, you can be an estimator, you can, there are different tracks, and ABC mm-hmm. does a really great job of having, we have student chapters in this, the four-year colleges we right now we have three we have one at Clemson we have one at ECU and one at App State so if a student wants to go to the the four-year degree track we have an opportunity for them in the construction management program but then if you don't you can go and do an apprenticeship program we have an apprenticeship program we are hoping to start in 2025 it's called the ABC Prep Academy so um, the Indiana Kentucky chapter really piloted this program where it's like AP courses when you go and take AP courses in high school and you get college credit to go into college you already have 10 hours that yeah. you've already knocked off it's the same thing you go and you're going to take your core classes you're going to take intro to electrician things like that so that you're already in level one or level two Mm -hmm. leaving high school and there are a lot of other programs in the community colleges that do this the thing that makes abc's program different is we've got our members backing it and supporting it so the the um placement rate is a hundred percent because wow they get to choose from four or five different members where they want to go to and so oh. they have a hundred percent job placement um, wow so we're very excited we've been working with Gaylor Electric to really get this started we're meeting with our Duff County schools in a couple of weeks um, good luck with that <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a uh, very very challenging getting into the Iredell County school system for any sure. school system yeah. it's so hard mm-hmm. to get I, I, I was sending emails yesterday and I was trying to get my point across of hey this is something beneficial and Mm -hmm. it sounded like I was just sending you know the emails that you get every day right hey how how are you doing I'm not trying to bug you but you know (laughs) this is my 19th email that I sent yeah so um I think once we can get in there and show them the importance of it Mm -hmm. then it's going to be it's going to yeah. be great it's just hard to I think the local government is, is seeing it in some ways though because like just over past uh, by Lotta they're building that high school trade school I don't even know what that's going to be like so we're yeah. trying to work with them as well uh-huh. it's and almost built or it is it's built it's they're in their second year yeah that's so. I was like what is that like it's mm-hmm. just a whole high school full of trades it, not college tr- high school right exactly yeah. and so they've got they'll do their math and science mm-hmm. and everything during the day and then they go into I think they've got about 12 or 13 trades and it's not just construction they've got um, auto mechanical mm-hmm. they've got um, uh, carpentry I mean it's 
fantastic what they're doing and, mm-hmm. and I think we need to we're going to start seeing a lot more of that because the need is so strong for are we going to see a are we going to see a full high school from ABC anytime soon <laughs> that is the goal I mean we would the love school to. of trades yeah welcome I, to we ABC would, school would, of trades <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we would love to partner mm-hmm. with the schools mm-hmm. first um but Hey, it's Someday? Not, it's not out of the realm of possibility. That's cool. That's know? cool. I know it's happening all over the place because Precision Plumbing just built one, too. Yeah. Um, I guess Mint Hill somewhere, maybe? Okay. I think. They built an entire school, but I think it's dedicated to them. I think it's right. like a plumbing school. Right. It's like a plumbing take. program or something. Yeah. But it's a full school. Like they, mm-hmm. they ribbon cut it and everything. Wow. It's a full building. That's neat. Yeah. That's Precision Plumbing's got more money than God, though, so. <laughs> wow. Big, big company. Yeah. They're great members of mm-hmm. ours, and we... Um, We've worked with them for a long time. We tried to get an apprenticeship program with them going, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's just hard. There's the the contractors have such a double edged sword. They everybody needs the training, mm-hmm. but they don't have enough skilled trade laborers to have people have the time to get their teach programs people. and yeah. The whole reason yeah. they need training and employees. Exactly, yeah. but they, they can't, yeah. they're behind schedule, so they can't take anybody off the job. So yeah. our program, our apprenticeship program, is a four-year program, and they are going to work during the day, and then they're going to school for two hours, two hour, two weeks, two days a week. Um, hmm. And it's, it, they have to be very dedicated. It, it, I mean, it's a lot of work to be working all day, then go and sit in the classroom for two hours. But um, yeah, we had twenty six that graduated this past mm-hmm. June. And, wow! Um, I love to play hard with contractors, but I uh, I learned my lesson a long time ago. It works just not for me. <laughs> At outdoor work, it's just not for me. <laughs> it's it's yeah. tough. Yeah, I did a I did two two nine hour days on a rooftop one time in the middle of summer, and I was like, I'm gonna find something that does not involve my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's it's not for everybody, and you know Christian Webb is the is the lord of the air conditioning. So you know, oh, I need it. I need sixty eight <laughs> degrees everywhere I go. <laughs> when so we, you would be a, a project manager. Oh, you yeah. an yeah, estimator, or estimator or marketing yes, director, yes. Or, yeah, yeah, or CEO. <laughs> <laughs> Slash well, president. And that's the, the ex- there are so many success stories from people that started out as form. You know, they started in doing sweeping the. The job site, and then they slowly moved up, and then they own their own company. It's there's yeah. so many stories like that. And that's that. a whole other topic. And since our listeners are primarily entrepreneurs, like you don't have to. It's not always the right direction, but you don't actually have to do the labor to start a business. Like you could literally create the accounting, create the marketing part, create the HR, create all the create all the sales processes, and then find people that are really good at the middle. That exactly. stuff that you don't do. I think that's the biggest part of being a leader is. You surround yourself with people that do things that you can't do mm-hmm. and make you look great and make your team look great. And that's yeah. that's kind of the goal of being a, a leader. Yeah. Actually, sometimes if you get stuck doing that middle, you don't scale the outsides. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned in the transition to president and CEO is I need I don't need to be put doing output work. It mm-hmm. needs I need to be managing and working with the people that are doing the work to to help them succeed that's perfect yeah it's it's a it's a particularly challenging thing for for any entrepreneur or business leader i think it's just you know we always talk about instead of working in the business you work on the business right. type of thing exactly um now when did when did the uh the, the changing of the god occur when did when did you officially become press we were there i just don't remember the date yes. <laughs> well, yeah so amy uh, her last day was february 6th okay and then I was named interim president. Mm-hmm. I was interim from February till about April, and I believe April seventeenth was the official. The official, I, I, the official I believe coronation. Was, I believe it was uh, April seventeenth, four twenty two. It was 8 a, 8 a Wednesday. <laughs> um, now, did you did you have any did you have any idea that Amy was leaving before February the sixth, or was it well quite in a January? Surprise? Okay, um, we came back from the new year and she said let's get together let's have a have lunch and I I just knew something and you know very very close right and I was like 
I texted Eric. I said, I'm either getting fired or she's leaving. Yeah. And neither one of these are going to be a good thing. And <laughs> so we went to lunch and, uh, and afterwards we, we stayed after and, um, and talked. And she said, this is going to be really hard. But um, she, her background is business development. Mm-hmm. And she was really missing the business development world. And sure. so she said, I, I just, I have found the perfect job and, and I'm, yeah. I'm missing that mm-hmm. part of I could tell it. she was missing it too. Yeah. She I think everybody, does. everybody said she had the business development soul. Like, that's oh, just yeah. who she was. And you know, every, so well, I went to lunch with her like twice and like 11 people said hey to mm-hmm. her. She knows everybody. Yep. Yeah. It's fantastic. I, she's still one of my mentors. Um, yeah. and it, it's a good we, mentor we, to have. We still sure. talk on a, a daily basis. And yeah. She is still very involved with ABC. She's on our council in Charlotte and is, is always continually recruiting new members. So um, she's not staff, but still working hard. <laughs> still so, hang, still yeah. hanging out. Yeah. Staff and heart. That's staff right. and heart. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so you, you have this lunch, uh, this highly emotional experience. Yes. <laughs> and then, and then um, so, you know, you, you, you kind of know that you'll be interim uh, then. I didn't. Or you didn't. Okay. No. All right, so then what's the next step from there? I, she told me, and she said, but it's okay. I think that I have a couple people that might be good to take over. We're mm-hmm. going to talk about it. It's going to be good. It's going to be fine. And I think she was telling it to herself more mm-hmm. than me. I think she was so worried that I was going to be upset. And I'm like, Amy, I want you to be happy right. more than anything. And so, so after about a week... I was named interim, and and that's by the board, right? Or how did that work? It was by the board. Okay, yes. all right. Um, and I was very comfortable doing a lot of that stuff. Amy and I were so close yeah, that worked together for I years. I felt so. very comfortable taking a lot of it over, and um, and she was right there to help me. It wasn't like she was stopped answering my calls. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a lot of phone calls, and and then Casey Sears Carr who used to be our board chair in 18 and 19 during the last presidential transition. Um, she was w- another one of my mentors. She was there to help me step by step. And um, I didn't really even think that it was going to be a full time. I-, I wasn't even going to put my name in, in the hat. And then I started thinking, I'm going to have to train the new person. Yeah. <laughs> Why not just put my name out there, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Right. I don't get the position and mm-hmm. we move on. And Carry that's on. Right. Yeah. But you were, you were the best person for the position. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, it was, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm 36 years old, so I never thought, Oh, at 36, I'm going to be president and CEO. I just, I think in my own head, I was thinking, Oh, I'm too young. They're going to think I'm way too young. I don't have the experience. But and yet you would have to train the next person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but so you'd be the first ever <laughs> head of the next, right? So I, I said, you know what? I'm just going to throw my name in the ring, and um, I'm and glad it, you did. It got down to three, okay. and and um, it, I actually thought it was going to be somebody else. Um, and then when we talked, it just wasn't a good fit for ABC. She had all of the credentials. She was amazing. I mean, had a mm. PhD and everything. Wow. Um, it just. I think at the end of the day, it came down to, I know our members Mm -hmm. better than, I've been here 10 years, I know our members, I know what the Carolinas need, I know where, Amy likes to say, I know where the bodies are buried. um, (laughs) Of course Amy likes to say. (laughs) Um, It just came down to to a a better fit. So, you know, most qualified, absolutely not. But um, I, I think just comfort level of our members, it was not a new person coming in, but mm-hmm. everybody knows me. And so, um, and we have a great staff. Our staff is fantastic. We've a young staff. We just hired our ninth staff member. Wow. So, um, nice. we are almost full capacity now. All right. All right. Um, I, I was going to ask about, you know, was there anything, was there anything that just totally caught you off guard? So on February 6th, Amy's last day. And then, you know, between then and, April or whatever, was there anything that you were like, I didn't realize that this was a part of the gig or, or anything like that? Or did you just kind of know what it took because you've been around it and you've been around Amy for as long as you had? I think the biggest thing was navigating 
conflict with sure. everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, referee uh, status. The referee. <laughs> I, I didn't Judge. realize how much of a referee I was going to be. Yeah. Um, and it's good. I, I enjoy it. I like talking through conflict. It's not my strong suit, but it's a challenge. And I'm, I feel like I'm growing and learning every day the more I have to do it. It's technically not a CEO's role, but in a smaller, smaller organization growing, I guess you'd have to cover that role. Yeah. I, I love conflict. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of companies literally have conflict roles. Yeah, I know. You have to have conflict to become better. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, because um, you have two good opinions and you got to find which way you want to exactly. go. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, or one crap opinion, you know. <laughs> and telling that, you know, making sure everybody feels like they leave the table with a win. Right. Mm-hmm. In any kind of negotiation, it kind of. Even though it might be something small about, you know, like the color of the centerpiece. Yeah. Somebody wants it red, somebody wants it blue, and you have to, all right, well, let's. Here's our tie-dye choice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do purple. Purple, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> something in between. Yeah, there's there's always something with everything. Um, was there, um, so so since you became prez, of course, you had you had the summer conference, and we then did. you have EIC coming up. We do. Um how but you're gonna be our MC. <laughs> oh, yeah. so I, I, oh, I can't. Celebrity I can't wait. Status. I'm, I'm gonna shotgun a Red Bull beforehand, and then we'll just we'll just see what comes pouring out of here. You All know? of your listeners need to come November 9th. <laughs> that'll be it'll Dolphin. be super. Um, I can't wait. It'll be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, so, I mean, you know, you, you obviously had a lot to do with with the events in previous years yeah. and things like that. Um, how did your role change with some of the the bigger events? And of course, in January we have we have the um, the retreat so yes. um, what's what's that been like for you with the transition the biggest transition is delegating okay um, letting other people take the work and telling them hey let's do this let's do that what do you think about this what do you think about that and not being on the ground because like we just talked about you ha- as a CEO you have to be managing people and not be doing a lot of the work. Mm-hmm. And I, it, conference was very hard for me because mm-hmm. I wanted to be doing the grunt work, doing all these things because that's what I, I do. And mm-hmm. I still did, you know, cleaning up after the events. Um, we're all in it together. We're small staff, so we're going to do it together. But it was, it was a big transition of being the one managing everything and not being the one doing all of the, mm-hmm. the work, being yeah. you know, worker B. So. Yeah, you have, you have to think about the the value of time type of thing, exactly. you know? And it's not it's not that you're any better or worse than anybody, you right. know, clean up after everything, but but it might be more valuable for the organization if you're if you're shaking hands with somebody that that's prospective member or, or wants to become involved or something like that. Right. Like it's just the the more valuable thing for the organization yes. as a whole, and yes. and that that adjustment period can be very difficult. So, makes makes perfect sense to me. Um, so, what would you, you know, if, if you go back in time, you're working at the Carolina Panthers, um, you know, life life takes all sorts of ups and downs, twists right. and turns, and things. Um, what what kind of advice would you give your younger self um, to prepare yourself for the position that you're in now? Have confidence and and don't take yourself too seriously just have fun and I think that there's young people try and get to you go from zero to 60 and want to have the c-suite position when they're 25 years old and Mm -hmm. it's like I didn't do anything differently I never dreamed I would be CEO it just kind of I work hard and it shows day in and day out and so the you know the board thought that that passion and and dedication would be a good fit for CEO but I never imagined it I don't even think I dreamed it would be possible Mm -hmm. so I don't my younger self would have never even thought yeah thought of the possibility of it yeah Mm -hmm. yeah or maybe even that you would be in construction you know because your background was in sports management I, I think if you told me at 18 years old when I was 18 oh you're gonna be CEO of a, a construction association, I would have laughed. Yeah, he'd be like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to be a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> That's start out as early education. And oh, wow. So. Yeah. 
that's uh yeah it's it's always amazing um i i can honestly tell you i, I never thought that uh i'd end up in marketing exactly you know um in fact when i was in grad school um marketing is one of the c's that i got so <laughs> really <laughs> yeah yeah marketing management i got a c in mark in in that it's a long story in itself, it's hilarious yeah yeah you hadn't told me that story yet really Oh, well, t- I'm gonna get you a shirt made. <laughs> I'm the C student, I guess. Hey, C's, C's get degrees. That's what that's my, right. that's what my <laughs> C's get degrees. You C's should, get you degrees. You should go back to the professor and be like, "Look, he gave me a C. Yeah, I, look where I am now." That's a really funny story that I will tell both of you off air. Uh, <laughs> it really is, though. So, um, well, I think we're just about out of time here. Um, and uh, thank you so much for sharing your story with with ABC Carolinas. This is the point where I stall and try to come up with a funny question, but I feel like we know mm-hmm. each other so well. I can't. Uh, I can't possibly come up with anything that that will humiliate you mm. or, or do, embarrass you. Do y'all you. ever get any liquor store calls on accident? Uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there are so busy. many times there. I, a lot of people when I s- said, "Hey, I'm working for ABC," they're like, "Oh, can you get us discounts on alcohol?" Oh yeah. Wrong ABC. Wrong ABC. Wrong ABC. Yeah. That's By the way, whoever came up with that name was a terrible, they did not understand SEO. That yeah. is going to be something hard to get over for the rest of y'all's life. Right. Oh, yeah, right. for sure. It's, you know, such is life. We, we keep the ABC stores in business. <laughs> we have lots of fun. And everything. Yeah, so y'all work together. Strong partnership. <laughs> uh, yes. I don't know if they, they know how much, but we, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been to the events. I know. Oh, yeah. You send them a lot of business. We, we sure do. <laughs> That's it. Very good. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank and you, guys. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see you at the next event. Sounds great. Yeah, thank you.